And I wrote about because I worked in education and there was a teacher. She was just like, uh, oh, if I don't get my coffee, my day is going to be bad. Mm. So I'm like, wait, so we were, so you're already stating that you're about to have a bad day because you didn't get some coffee right so it's like <laughs> what is it that just it sparked something in me so i'm like what is the measure of a bad day welcome to beyond the ball podcast What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as you all know, that the focus of this podcast is ultimately to provide stories, strategies, and successes to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And if you haven't followed us or connected with us on YouTube as of yet, I would encourage you to do that. You can just type in Jonathan Jones Speaks on YouTube, and then you'll be able to see all the Beyond the Ball episodes and as well as just additional content. But now we're going to go ahead and get to today's guest. Um, and uh, th this gentleman here, uh, I I I've seen him, just the work that he's done, just in regards to helping struggling students, as well as young professionals, just go from him being a speaker, a writer, a coach, and, and even a, a mentor. Man, just welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast, Mr. D'Artanen Wilson. How we doing, D'Artanen? How y'all doing today? Pleasure, pleasure to be here today. Really appreciate you, Jonathan, for just having me on to just, you know, just do what we do best and that's help people. So, yes, yeah, sir. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so just just give a brief, brief introduction for those people who might not be familiar with you <laughs> as of yet and just the work that you do. Uh, my name is Darton and Wilson, born and raised in Greenville, Texas, graduate of A&M Commerce. And uh, what I do, I just motivate people, give them godly inspiration. Uh, started off just me and a friend of mine. We just wanted to do YouTube and we were like, hey, let's just help people be. Let's just help people, you know, become successful. And we just started off, you know, to doing interviews of people that were successful on the road to success and our whole mission was to get big on social media just so they can come to the YouTube. And, you know, it took a whole different turn because I was doing motivation, inspiration. But, you know, my life, I was called. Uh, God has called me to do more. So I just started really seem like I was talking to myself. And if I seen something good, I just reposted it. And what started out as me trying to grow social media just started helping me to not only speak to myself, but just started reaching out and speaking to others. And it just went on from there. So I just kept at it and really seeing that I was making an impact. You know, it became more than me, became more than me just trying to be a quote unquote YouTube star. So <laughs> I was just like, man, you know what? It's meant for me to do this, like the recognition, whatever. I just want to help people, you know, get to, you know, fulfill their God given destiny in life. So. But yeah, man, it's it's been a long journey starting off probably 2016. I had started uh it was a business before it was became a foundation, but it's called Dream Leaders. And like I was stated, we were doing interviews of people that were successful on the road to success and just helping people, you know, giving stories of, you know, average people that we might not view as successful and just showing like, hey, you don't have to have a million dollars, a yacht, a mansion and all that to be mm -hmm. successful. And we were just interviewing average college students. We were interviewing like doctors. We were interviewing like the um, professors on the college campus and different things like that to just show like, hey, these people are successful in their own right. Like success, you know, it just depends on you. What do you deem as successful? And that's what we that's what we looked at. That's how we did it. Then later on, like I never wanted to be a speaker, a write a book, <laughs> none of that stuff. It just happened that a frat of a fraternity on our campus was like, hey, y'all should come speak at this event and just tell us what y'all do, different things like that. And we went and everybody like, wow, man, y'all doing a great thing. Da, da, da. And we were like, man, we could probably be motivational speakers. So <laughs> in 2016, we were calling up schools and different things like that, going to schools and just speaking, like just motivating kids, inspiring kids and stuff like that. And it just took off from there. And I just 
kept at it. Then later on, I was like, you know what? I don't have a product or nothing like that to like give to people. I'm just here, just motivating on social media. So I decided to write a book. And in the beginning, it was a tough it was tough writing the book. But as I got to it and really figured it out, then, you know, before you know it, I have three and currently working on two more right now. So, (laughs) yes, sir. Wow. So take us back. You said you said it started in 2016. So 2016. So, so yeah. How how did this even come up, though? Like, like, what was the start starting point? Was it was it you wanted to get big on social media or like you saw somebody on social media that was big and you're like, I want to do what they're doing? Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm sure most people know, most people don't know, but I had a basketball dream. So uh, that basketball dream didn't work out. And, you know, I asked God, like, God, I need a sign because I'm still out here trying to try out. I went to a college. Coaches ended up leaving and stuff like that. I wasn't highly recruited. And, you know, God gave me that sign. I ended up tearing my Achilles. And in my mind, I'm like, man, that wasn't a sign I wanted or needed. And all of a sudden, it's like when my focus got off of basketball I was able like it's like guys just start putting ideas in my mind of different things and it just happened to come that dream leaders that's why I kept hearing because I'm like we're always chasing a dream but what happened once we reach that dream now we can lead others into achieving their dreams and stuff like that so uh that's how it started and I was just at work one day watching Vines and I'm like, these people really making millions of dollars just off of like what six second videos or something like that. So I was like, you know what? We should do YouTube. We should just make it positive. And it just went from there. We planned the whole thing. We wrote down everything before we made our first video. And I think our YouTube channel is still up. It's called uh, Dream Leaders TV. And uh, it's still up. And you'll see our first video. Like we interviewed like a, a professor at our college and stuff like that. You know, then we just start being creative, uh, making uh little intros to it and different things like that to kind of give it a little i wouldn't say entertainment but a little bit you know production wise so we picked up more skills just interviewing people we picked up like editing skills uh we start taking pictures and start making quotes and stuff like that and that's just how it started so yeah man yeah well i i want to i want to take a slight pivot here and i just want you to talk about because you 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 talked about you know what what you do and you talked about uh, a little bit about your story but man anybody who follows you on tiktok on instagram on youtube wherever it might be do you crank out the content okay dartana can we talk (laughs) about that because you like well what is your process in getting this content out because Going back to what you said initially, you were talking about, you know, you want to impact lives and want to change mm-hmm. lives and and help people be in position to really be successful. But, bro, how, like, how do you do all this and what does that strategy look like? Yeah. So uh, for me, I'll say at the beginning, like with Twitter, Twitter and Instagram was easy for Instagram. It just became like, I mean, you can see it too. Most people just recycle old quotes. Like everybody used the same stuff. It's been for years. Like I see some stuff now. It seemed new to some people. I'm like, I seen that in 2016. It's just coming from the right mouth this time. Mm. So we just started off like perfecting, like using like major artists, like in the background and put a quote over them and stuff like that. And, you know, most times you just have to post like two to three times a day. So we will just find those quotes, get them down. Then Twitter uh, kind of did the same thing because I figured out Instagram because my my thing was I wasn't I wasn't viral or anything to gain a big following. I just had a strategy and I just followed people. I'm like, if they follow me back, then they obviously like my stuff that I do. So that's why I have so many followers. On, that's why I follow so many people on Twitter, because I'm like, I follow those people. They end up following me back. You know, I'm I'm a nobody. I'm not, you know, so it's like, who am I to say, oh, I got this many followers. I don't follow that many people, you know, because mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's life is interesting. You can pick some get something from somebody's life. And uh, just Twitter, it was, it's just thoughts to that that would just come along. And uh, with like the video videos took me a long time because like back in 2016, I wasn't confident. And I really didn't like I stuttered like I had some old videos like I used to have to write it down before I said anything. And I just picked, the, you know, just Ed chopped up the video as if I was saying it, you know, thoroughly and stuff like that. But now I'm like more comfortable. I'm speaking because I have the knowledge to do it. So 
I'll write down, I just need a topic. Cause now if I got a topic, I can just relate it to my experience. And, you know, just in my life, I have a lot of experience. So if you have a topic and it's an important topic, just relate it to your experience. Cause people are going to relate to what's real. Like, cause most people, they can get a topic and they can just be saying some stuff and, you know, it can sound good. Or to some people, you know, if a person really know you, then, you know, there's like, oh, it's kind of iffy, but I feel like most people, that know me, the things I say, like they can really say, oh, like that guy's like that, you know? So it comes with just lifestyles and topics and just having the plan in place. Like I ain't going to, sometimes, most times I get a little dry and it takes me to like really like dive in certain music I listen to, certain things I watch and stuff like that to really start diving into some topics that really like will get me going and stuff. So I do believe you do have to have like a process and a plan in place when putting out content because you just want it to be real. Like just use it as if you're talking to yourself because my first book came from a bunch of stuff that I posted on Twitter. So Twitter is like my pre-write, but nobody know that because I'm the author of it. So now when you buy my book, you know, I'm not trying to get my information because people are like, oh, I see it on, but I give you more in the book, but I get my topic just maybe off of Twitter you know, mm-hmm. something that I already posted because I'm like, wait, what did I, you know, a topic that I want to talk about. I'm like, wait, I talked about this on Twitter because I post almost every day. So I have a lot of stuff. So I have to go back on there and stuff. So I kind of use Twitter as like a pre-writing thing too, as well, because uh, I have notes. I have so many notes in my phone. Like when something comes to me, like I have to write it down because I was told like, if you don't write it down, it just goes to the next person. So if I write it down, then I go on, go ahead and put it out there while I have it, you know, ready in my mind. And, you know, that person that really needed it, that followed me, won't have to wait for that next person because who knows when that next person will stay what they need, you know, so. Yeah, man, I, th- I think I think that's a really great point that, that you mm-hmm. that you made for, for one, you know, the person out there who is thinking about p- putting out content or wanting to put out content, but not feeling confident. Uh, but w- what you what you just really shared was one, if that's the case, then repost something that somebody else has shared, but put it on your page. But then even, even outside of that, like like you also said, if you get to a point to where you might feel like you might get dry, then use your experiences. Right. Mm-hmm. Use use the songs that are out. Use, you know, what series that are on TV and and just talk about what what this made you feel in your perspective. I think that's so good because a lot of times. Just like you said, a, a lot of information is getting recycled, but at mm-hmm. the same time, your perspective isn't recycled because it's yours. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of because I um I help like I mentor a couple of people and just tell them like, I mean, what people are saying nowadays. Somebody already said, but you just like you like we mentioned like you just got to relate it to your experiences. Like everybody have different experiences. Like, but that quote that you posted, it can relate to everybody, but not your experience. Like your experience is just going to pick out, like, it's going to be certain people that can relate to your experience. Like not everybody, everybody can relate to a quote, but not everybody's going to be able to relate to her experience. Because I've had people come to me with experience that I've never, like things that I've never experienced in my life, but me understanding, like I can relate it to something that I have experienced. Like it can be something that you struggled with. Like you might that this person might have struggled with something else from me, but in the same instant, we both struggled. So I can just help them. Like if I struggle with this, this is how I got over this struggle. And that's how you can like just navigate and see like that person. Like if you're struggling with this and I struggle with that, if you just do something, if you do what I did to overcome this struggle, it will help you too. But it's the thing is you have to you have to want to change that struggle. Like you have to want to overcome it because Sometimes like we can be struggling with something and it seemed like we're doing good for a week. It seemed like we're doing good for two weeks. Then all of a sudden it come back on us. And that's the hardest thing to fight is temptations and stuff like that. So if temptation is coming back, I mean, you just got to be stronger. So what are you doing and how are you equipping yourself to be stronger when that temptation or that struggle comes back? Because those things are always going to come like our past is always going to come before. It's just how we handle it this time and how we react to it this time so man yeah yeah i mean i think that's the most uh uh the the, the most of life right not what happens mm-hmm. but how, how we respond exactly and, 
And with you, you know, just working with individuals around mindset and also mentoring, how, how do you how do you stay even keel or how do you stay just in the spot to where, you know, certain things happen to you and you're like, OK, I understand this happened, but I still need to move forward. Exactly. Knowing that, you know, there's a lot of people that are looking, looking to you and, you know, people who are just really being inspired by you. So so what, what do you do, you know, j- just in those situations to keep your head above water? So for me, I always feel like when you're pouring into people, you need somebody pouring into you. So and I got somebody to go to and that's my mother. So and I based like my whole lifestyle was a choice of mine. But I was able to see somebody life change before me and turn for the better to help her kids, you know, put her kids in better situations. So I go to my mom almost for everything because I'm like, God, I seen her change her life, give her life to you. And I seen how you blessed her. I seen how you favored her. I seen how her just being obedient to you, the thing that you were able to even give to us. So I have my mother to go to because, uh, you know, I being young and stuff, I made bad decisions and different things like that. But just having my mother right there being my strongest critic, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, man. But it's like, you know what? Let me just listen. Like, I didn't like to hear it at first. But once I actually like, you know, has time to myself and like, you know what, my mom's right. I start making the right decisions. And that's when I begin to be sharpened. Like I always look to my mom for certain things because, you know, even though we even me and my mom, we have different experiences. But it's like she got more experience because she's been in this world longer. And like I said, I seen her life like it wasn't it wasn't something she was just pretending like I really seen her do things. That's why I, the first person advice I take is my mother's because I seen her life. And when I need some pouring and she'll know, I'll just I go over there and I'll just stay because I know she's going to pour into me. You know, she's not going to leave me wrong or anything like that. So, you know, shout out to my mom, because, you know, if I didn't have her, if I didn't listen, I wouldn't have the things that I have. I wouldn't be where I am today. And I wouldn't, you know, like just keeping the mind. That's why I focus on the mind, because like that mind is that it can be dangerous if you like like if you play with it, it can be dangerous. That's why. It's it's important when you're pouring out to have somebody pouring into you. Like if I would, didn't have nobody pouring into me, like I would you will probably see me like disappear off the social media and stuff because it's like it's really like it really is tough because you might have a bad day or or a bad week or something like that. In the instance of, you know, some people say bad days, but I, just, I believe in bad moments. But somebody might have had a bad week or it might not have been my week. And now I'm posting this. Hey, y'all have a great week. Like, hey, my week wasn't great. How am I going to post that you're going to have a great week when I don't even believe myself that my week is going to be great? So it's all in that belief system, getting people poured into you and just know why you're doing it. Because if I didn't have a purpose and didn't know why I was motivating people and inspiring people, then I will just be like a regular influencer, just putting it on there to just say I'm getting likes. But I could care less because like, I see people really come to me with real problems Mm. and they're getting they're getting a real answer, you know. So that's the most important thing to me is that, you know, people are seeing what I'm posting. Then they might shoot me a DM. They might because some people they I know you got you might have a lot of DMs and I really don't. But if you come to me, I'll respond to you, you know, because I don't have that many DMs. I used to like starting off because people asking questions and stuff like that. But now, like. People have real problems. If they come to me, you know, I'll give them a real life answer and just tell them like I'm a no I'm just a nobody trying to help everybody and tell them about somebody, you know. So Yeah, yeah. Talk talk a little bit about the the philosophy that you have behind not having bad days or not believing in bad days and bad weeks, but bad moments. Talk talk break break that down a little bit for the people. Yeah, so I um I actually wrote a chapter in my book. Well, it was like a page in my book, excuse me. It's like a page in my book. It was called The Measure of a Bad Day. And I wrote about because I worked in education and there was a teacher. She was just like, uh, oh, if I don't get my coffee, my day is going to be bad. Mm. So I'm like, wait, so we were, so you're already stating that you're about to have a bad day because you didn't get some coffee. Right. So it's like, <laughs> what is it? That just it sparked something in me. So I'm like, what is the measure of a bad day? Then uh, with me, I worked in special ed- uh, special education and those kids, 
like 90 percent of their day were good but 10 percent it might not have been so good so you got to think wait the majority of their day was good they might have just had a five to ten minute breakdown you know that probably was a it was a tough long five to ten minutes but it's <laughs> like but after that five to ten they're good they're right back in their rhythm doing their routines and stuff like that so that just sparked in me like all right we have bad moments and that bad only lasts as long as we allow it to you know so if somebody messed up on my order i don't have to go back up to wendy's and be mad at everybody for messing up on my order you know they just messed up on my order i can just go hey y'all messed up on my order you know how you react to things so if you mess up on my order hey y'all messed up on my sandwich uh I wanted two pieces of bacon, not zero, you know, something like that. So it's like we really have control over that. And most people think, you know, uh, I understand trauma and different things like that. But sometimes you got just got to break those generational curses and stuff, because it's people out here that really could be mad about the world, about their life. But some people shift that, you know, the experiences they have, the things they have, they have experienced, they have used that and shifted it to, you know, become good people and to become a better parent and to become a better husband or wife. So why can't I shift that when there's somebody out there that experienced worse? So Mm -hmm. I feel like we have bad moments and we can overcome those bad moments. And if it lasts longer than what it's supposed to is because we chose to, you know, allow it to last that long. So yeah, that's good, man. That's good. Yeah, and I, I always found that funny too. The people are like, oh, I haven't had my coffee yet. Yeah. Don't talk to me. Oh, I need my coffee. I don't know how exactly. you make it today. I'm like, what? what yeah, I, and I don't even drink coffee. Coffee is I like, either. if I drink coffee, I might just, I might have been like real sleepy or something. But I am not a coffee drinker. Nah, nah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm good on the coffee. I'm, I'm good yeah. on the coffee. So yeah, I think it's an addiction. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's it really an addiction. Is. Yeah, it, it, it really is. It, it, it is because you know people. Some people say they can't function without coffee. Mm-hmm. So I guess function coffee addicts or, or, or whatever. But hey, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to judge. <laughs> right. So so knowing also that you that you're also a coach. Mm-hmm. So how how do you tie all this in with with with, with the work that you do and and with 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 dream leaders and coaching and mentoring how do you make all of this work together so uh when i coach i usually do uh travel basketball so right now i'm in we uh we're doing our travel basketball for the spring and the summer so my guys we've been in tournaments and stuff like that so i just put out those schedules and stuff and we have practice so i kind of schedule that out uh when it comes to like books and like when I do posts and all that stuff, that stuff, I wake up around like five o'clock in the morning and I try to get a bunch of stuff done in the morning. And I just feel like that's that's one of the key things. Like you really have to wake up early because if you wake up late, like your day will go by like fast, like the day go by so slow in the morning, mm-hmm. like believe it or not. And it's the stroke because I even I work out every morning, too. So like I have to put all that in there and I probably I get the most stuff done early in the morning because midday um, is, is this probably won't get done, to be honest. So <laughs> all my and I and I have kids and stuff, too, and I have a wife and kids. So, you know, the house is pretty loud. So I really can't get in I have to do it in the morning or I won't get it done or late at night, just depending on how I feel. But it's it's all about balance, like. You really have to balance your life because you can balance your life and balancing your life is just having time management skills. And I'm not the best at time management, but like I have been I have kind of put myself up there to just challenge myself to work on my time management skills. And I tell kids now, like, man, this is very important. Like like having my job, it really like pushed me to focus on those time management skills by putting stuff on my calendar a week ahead and really going by what's on my calendar and my supervisor she told me something great she said uh let your calendar work for you don't work for your calendar Mm -hmm. so just putting that stuff on there and all right right, i gotta be here from 10 to 11 gotta be here from 12 to 1 and it's just good to plan stuff out because i I got through co- college procrastination, procrastinating. So that's why I tell people, if I got through it, you can do it because I procrastinated. If you just stay ahead and just do it, then you can you can make it. 
So, yeah, man, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. You know, just almost like separating things up in compartments. You know, mm-hmm. okay, we're doing this on Tuesdays. We're doing this on Thursdays exactly. at six p.m. You know, at uh, at night we're gonna do this here, this there. Exactly. Because okay. I don't know if you okay, notice on. I don't know if you know, every Tuesday I do a thing, just say uh, today I'm going to be and I say greater average Then today I'm going to allow happiness and growth or doubt and excuses. I do it every Tuesday. That's the only day I do it. I have something that I do just on Tuesdays alone. And I just do that just to just to see people just to see their interaction, because sometimes we can overwhelm ourselves. And I have many a time just trying to give people something every day. Instead of saying, you know what, let me do Monday, Wednesday, I'll do this. Maybe Tuesdays, I'll do this. Thursday, I'll do this. So don't overwhelm yourself by thinking that you don't have enough out there. Because I'll do videos for a week straight or I'll post three videos in a day. Then the next day you might get one. And the day that you got the one with the most valuable information, you know. So <laughs> sometimes we just try to make a lot of content and think it ha- all of it has to go out in one day. But Say, for instance, if you make five videos, you can still you still got two weeks worth of content if you wanted it to be two weeks worth. But sometimes we just think, oh, this might go viral. And I'm guilty of it thinking, oh, this is the one right here because I was speaking. But then it'd be the one that you least expect that really touched somebody. So, yeah, just just spreading it out and letting people see like, on OK, on every Tuesday, he going to post this. It's like I used to watch Love and Hip Hop. I knew on every Monday we was getting a new episode at eight o'clock. So who was ready at eight o'clock? I was ready to watch it because they I knew every Monday they was coming with a, you know, and then probably for the rest of the week, we got some reruns or something. So you can post your old stuff, you know, but on Tuesday, you know, you're going to get something new. Mm, that's a bar right there. Mm-hmm. You just you just dropped the bar right there. That, that, that was good. You snuck that in there. Yeah. <laughs> Snuck it in there. That, that, that okay. was good. That was good. I'm so, a writer before I'm a speaker. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very, very nice. Very nice. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna sneak a question in, then we're gonna mm-hmm. get ready to do the two-minute drill. And I'm gonna tell you what that is in just a second. Okay. But how do you continue to grow your mind and how do you continue to grow just in your own uh personal development? Just with like I said before, you know, you pumping out all this content mm-hmm. and you really helping people in this way. How are you you feeding or growing yourself? Uh, the way I feed and grow myself, uh, like I stated earlier, I was I was called by God at a young age, and I f- just feel like like when I just get worship music in my ears, when I read the Bible, that really equips me. Like I don't know, I can't speak for nobody else, but for me in general, like I know I got my mom to go to. I do have another mentor I can go to, but like when I actually like get into that mode and really seek God, that's what really helps me to really just be clear minded, you know, and really just things just start coming to me like out of nowhere. And that's one of the major things. Cause like all my books I've wrote, written, I always had music, like worship music in my ears because it just started flowing. Like it was hard to write that first sentence, but once it came, everything else just came after it. Just so just having like worship music in my ear, just knowing what I'm called to do more than just what, the self gain. So I know, you know, like I've been saying it's. I know it's not about me. It's bigger than me. You know, it's bigger than anything. So just keep insane in that way. And just finding the time to just take out the time to go to God and just let him, you know, cast all your cares on him so he can, you know, really equip you because that that's one of the toughest things and not trying to be spiritual on the show or nothing no, like that ahead, and stuff ahead. like that. But, uh, you know, most time we try to figure God out through people instead of seeking him for ourselves. And that's what really hurt us because we're going to let people like I can let you down. If you see my imperfect, in my, if you see my imperfection, I'm going to let you down. But if I go straight to God myself, then, you know, now he can reveal things to me. He can start, you know, giving me the eye, the right eye, the spiritual eyes, the spiritual ears. And, you know, just start equipping me with stuff that I really need to see the bigger picture. You know, so that that's just something that I always I didn't think about it until I started writing and I had certain music on at one point. I'm like, man, I feel dry. Then I put on another song and everything just started flowing from there. Mm. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, now we're gonna we're gonna transition to the to the two minute drill, and uh, the, okay. the two minute, yeah 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 the, the two minute drill for those people who might be tuning in for the first time. This is where I'm gonna ask uh, Mr. D'Artagnan a few rapid fire questions, and then we're just gonna just get to see a different side of you, have a little bit of fun, and then you can let people know where to find you and connect with you uh, after this. So, are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Pancakes or waffles? Mm. Pancakes. Okay. Popeyes or Chick fil A? I like Popeyes. Popeyes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, what, what's, what's the last book you read? Uh, my book, actually, <laughs> for the first time. It's called Growing by Choice. <laughs> mm, okay. Okay. Well, what, what, what's the most underrated cereal? Uh, Frosted Flakes. Oh, okay. Okay. What, what, what's your go to streaming show of preference? Streaming show? Uh, I still I'm still an ESPN guy okay. so anything sports really okay that's fair that's fair and what what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete you can take your time uh for a student athlete just know that your skills is 10 percent and the mindset you need for it is 90 percent and I tell my athletes this all the time. You always, that 10% you're going to have. But once that 90% start going down, that's what's going to hurt you the most because everything is mental. Like you can have the most skills in the world. But if you do not have the mindset to ignore the trash talk, to ignore certain things, then you're going to see it just diminish, diminish your, your ability, your skills. So if your mindset going down, if it go to 80 that means your skills is going to go to zero because you only got 10 percent of that that's why you got to always keep that mindset at 90 so that skills can stay at 10 percent because that's all you need like everything is mental it starts in the mind and i say that because i used to train hard do everything but i lack confidence so once i was able to really build my confidence and build my mindset then my skills started backing that up so always strengthen your mind and just be ready be tuned in be focused locked in to just play and dominate and stay humble <laughs> there it is there it is and then what's who's who's one guest that you would like to see me interview next on beyond the ball oh man there's a, a couple i actually have a young guy he's actually going to play basketball at sfa i want to i want to see him on there because he he's grown a lot because i trained him since he was in ninth grade Okay. And now he's being able to live out his dream and stuff like that. He even helped me coach uh, my tribal basketball team and stuff like that. So his name's Adrian Hall. Great kid. Uh, overcame a lot in his life. And he's he's an athlete. Super athlete. <laughs> OK, sounds good. Sounds good. We, I, I need you to set that up. I need you. Yes, to set sir. That up. I'm going to tell him right now. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Now, now, uh, D'Artan, just take this time and let people know where they can follow you connect with you and everything like that so like i said name is dartanen wilson uh you can follow me on instagram and twitter at dartanen uh youtube living proof tv also if you want to check out our family stuff we kind of do some reaction stuff so youtube uh the wilson family 4d so if y'all want to check us out there as well with my family and that's all right there excellent excellent well D'Artagnan, man, I appreciate you taking the time to, to come on, really, really, really share your insight, share your perspective, and, and, and really give us some good game today, man. Oh, no, thank you for having me. It was, it was definitely a pleasure. I really appreciate you, all that you do. Like, I ain't going to lie, I was stalking your pal. I was like, man, this guy just down the street from me, and he doing big things. I need to connect with him. So, <laughs> but yeah, I love what you do, man. Keep doing the great work. Much, much respect, man. Much respect. Yes. So to all the ballers out there, all the ballers out there, I want to encourage you all definitely connect with D'Artan. And he, I, I was not playing. He pumps out the content, but it, it's applicable content and it's useful content. So you want to make sure to get connected with him uh, or even, you know, shoot a, shoot a screenshot. If you're watching this episode on YouTube and DM it to him and then let him know what part really spoke to you. Or just like you said, if you have questions, feel free to hit him up and, and connect with them because that's the purpose of our show. We're, we're looking to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And the only way we can do that is by bringing on guests who make themselves accessible and really want to add value to the community. So uh, to all my ballers out there, student athletes, my coaches and everyone in between, 
I want to encourage you all once again, make sure to subscribe to the to the channel on YouTube just under Jonathan Jones Speaks. And remember, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.